Hey everyone, it has been a hot minute since I've done any actual posting or vlogging or anything on my channel. Um, I wanted to give you an update on my transition. Um, for some background, I came out in October of 2021 and I started hormones on 11-4 of 2021. And I started slowly upping my dosage. After about six months, I started on progesterone. And on November 4th of last year, I had my orchiectomy, which allowed me to get off of spironolactone. If you're on Spiro and you have no interest in keeping your two bits um, and you have the ability to get an orchiectomy, check with your insurance. Um, you might be surprised that it's covered. Um, my surgeon used the reasoning that it's healthier for me to get off of Spiro, and that's how he got my insurance to approve it. So um, check into that if you're looking at getting an Orky, um, because getting the full vaginoplasty, if that's the route that you want to take, it's perfectly valid to not want to do that. Um, for me, I have a lot of dysphoria in that general area. So um, yeah, you can just get that done and focus on uh, the rest later on if you'd like. Uh, getting the getting bottom surgery is definitely difficult. Um, I am now 59 days out from having bottom surgery. So, but, so I've been transitioning for about 19 months or so, and I switched to estrogen injections recently. And I've, because I've been doing my estrogen pills under my tongue sublingually. I was on six milligrams a day and I would say starting in around December of this year, um, my body feminization just kind of stalled and the last blood test I had showed my estrogen levels being 92 where they should really be up around 200 or so. Uh, so when I switched to injections, it just everything just started uh, working up again. So um, my baps are growing, which is nice. I'm definitely a fan of that. I'm hoping that keeps keeps on going. I know I'm still about a year away from like the magic point where um, things really kind of solidify changes like facial feminization and breast growth and stuff like that. So it's a wait. Um, that's, the, that's the trans experiences. Nothing happens quickly. It's definitely a marathon and not a race. So if you're transitioning, just keep that in mind. Um, I also started some vocal training uh, a few months ago, and it's I'm struggling with it, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, probably a lot of it has to do with the fact that I smoked for 20 years, so all this is just kind of icky and yeah, but I've gone a long way considering, let's switch to my previous voice. This is what my previous voice sounded like. And ooh, I hate talking like that. Um, it just kind of squicks me out. So um, yeah, I've been working on that. I have a meeting next week with a uh, voice, um, the uh, voice uh, feminization surgeon. And I'd like to get that done this year if possible. But the problem is you can't talk for two weeks and I am the co-parent of a very uh, intense three-year-old, and I don't want to have um, his other mom have to deal with all that alone for two weeks. So I'm really hoping to finally find a remote career by then so I can hire a nanny or something. Because if I can get it done this year, since I also have my full death vaginoplasty coming up, uh, it'll pretty much just be, I, I won't really have any copay after that because I'll be right up at my insurance deductible. Um, I live in Ohio. It is very hard to find insurance for getting uh, bottom surgery. I did a lot of research. Um, well, that's if you're on the Affordable Care Act like me. I did a lot of research and I found that Oscar Insurance was the only one that I had a chance of doing it. So a little background on the steps that you have to go through. Um, obviously, if you're transitioning and you're looking at surgeries, you know that you have to have two letters um, from medical professionals, one of them being a licensed uh, therapist and another being um, another uh, 
impartial counselor or doctor or something like that. So I have those two letters and I'm working on the hair removal, which is one of the worst things I've ever done in my life. I have been doing laser and electrolysis both on my face and on my nethers. And the laser's bad, I'm not going to lie, um, especially if you're doing on your face, like right here, um, these little hairs under your nostril, anything on your upper lip, just, it, it sucks. And the laser down below, I haven't found to be too bad. Um, I have some skin darkening there, so they had to switch up the laser a little bit to um, accommodate for that, and it got less painful then, um, because they are working on the darker skin, and laser really just... In order for laser to work, um, you have to have darker hairs. It does not work on blonde or gray hairs. And being 42 years old, I have a mix of both. So um, I've been having to do both laser and electrolysis on my nethers. And everything you've heard about how bad electrolysis is, is true. Um, I All these old conservative politicians that are legislating against the trans community and trying to take away our access to health care, they need to sit down on a table and have their uh, undercarriage uh, treated with electrolysis for an hour. And then I want to hear that it's a choice. <laughs> Being trans is not a choice. Coming out as trans is the only choice. Uh, but as you know, we're born this way. We've always been here. We've been fear, here for tens of thousands of years, and we're always going to be here. Um, but I don't, I mean, they don't understand what we're going through. But back to electrolysis, it does suck. It sucks really bad. Um, but it's necessary if you have uh, lighter hairs. And I, my suggestions are, Take Tylenol um, if, you, if you can. If you're not allergic to Tylenol, take as much as you can beforehand. And I uh, take a couple C CBD gummies. I had a little bit of um, painkillers left over from my orchiectomy. It was just some hydrocodone. And honestly, it, it didn't even help, to tell you the truth. So, um, But if you're thinking of getting it done, you can do it. If your electrolysis uh, tech allows it. I'd recommend having someone else in there with you. Uh, just hold your hand. I've been doing it solo, but I just try to keep myself distracted by talking to my tech. Um, if you are in Northeast Ohio, or Ohio in general, there is a trans and non-binary owned hair removal place that is located in Stowe, where I go, called Transformative Hair Removal. I will link to them in the description of this video. But it is about the most perfect place that you can have it done. They do both electrolysis and they just started doing laser as well. So yeah, um, it's not going to be fun if you need to get it done, but I believe in you. You can do it. We've, uh, us in the trans community have faced a lot and it's just one more thing uh, to go through. Um, but back to the insurance. Um, I'm still trying to see if I can get my insurance to cover the electrolysis, but that's going to be a whole other fight, and I'm still waiting on um, some invoices for that. But if you're looking for insurance, uh, be, look through all the, document, the insurance documentation, um, explanations of all the benefits and everything, and make sure that gender affirming care is not um, disallowed. Technically, they're not allowed to do that, but I don't really think there's any oversight. And there's so few of us that none of us, I guess, can put up enough of a stink to get that changed. Um, different states are different. Some states you won't be able to get it at all. In Ohio, it's tough. Some states, it's, it's easy. But um, so I had the letters. Um, I have the hair removal. I met with my surgeon, and my surgeon sent over um, a request for the approval of the surgery, and it got denied right away, um, which obviously pissed me off, but this is, this is just one of those things where you go through a ton of roadblocks, and you just have to jump every single hurdle, and if you get denied, just appeal, 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 appeal. Um, 
ask for help from your doctor. Um, if you have any uh, queer friendly lawyers around, um, groups or something like that or in Ohio, like Trans Ohio, you can look them up. They might be able to help. Um, in my case, it turned out that the, uh, the surgeon's office had accidentally left an orchiectomy on the list of procedures uh, that they wanted approved. So the doctor that was reviewing it was just some random family doctor from Virginia. And uh, the, the letter was so just, it was poorly written. It started with like, so you want to change your gender. Oh, but I don't think the doctor really had any experience with what goes into trans health care and the surgeries and stuff like that. So they just saw one thing that had already been done and just disallowed it. So um, my surgeon uh, filed it again and it still had the orchiectomy on there. But the second time it was approved with, ex with the exception of the orchiectomy, which makes sense. They're not going to pay for something that has already been done. Um, and you can't get an orchiectomy twice, at least I would hope not. So, um, yeah, now I am in the waiting game. I am having uh, my surgery done at the Cleveland Clinic and at the end of August. Um, and with the Cleveland Clinic, uh, the surgeon there, Dr. Ferrando, has been doing it for about seven years. She's done a ton of surgeries. Um, and you have, you get to stay in the hospital for a few days and then they move you to the hotel attached to the clinic after that, which unfortunately you have to pay for out of pocket and it's like $1,600. So if you're looking at getting some crowdfunding going, do it soon, um, as soon as possible, um, just to build up as much time as, as you can. I have a pretty big following on Facebook and LinkedIn. And that helped me build up, I think I built up about $3,000 total, which I have uh, have some in savings for the surgery itself and the hotel stay. And some of it has gone to the hair removal. Um, yeah, just keep at it. I, I'm ludicrously excited for this surgery. I, I've known that I've been living in the wrong body for most of my life, but I grew up in an extremely bigoted, Christian conservative family, as I know many, uh, many of you have, and you know how hard that is. And I didn't even really find out that trans people existed until I think it was 2005, um, 2005, 2006. And I saw a documentary, docu documentary called Trans Generation, and that just like opened my eyes. I'm like, whoa, this is a thing. But I stayed in the closet for a long time. I think. That was when my egg first started cracking a little bit, but after that, it took until 2021 for me to, and my dad offing himself, to be uh, perfectly honest, to kind of break free of the control of my family and uh, finally admit to myself who I am and start the transition. So, wish I had done it sooner, but... It is what it is. Uh, it's never too late. I've said it in previous videos. It's never too late to start. Um, I was almost 40 when I started. I'm 42 now, and I couldn't be happier. Um, obviously, there's some body dysphoria issues that I'm never really going to be able to treat, like broader shoulders, which definitely makes finding clothes a little bit difficult. Um, and I still have like boy belly and stuff like that that I'm trying to do, but. I have a problem with snacking, especially at night, and being on 200 milligrams of progesterone, just losing weight is hard. I was hoping, I'm still hoping by, I'm like 234 pounds right now, I'm hoping by the time I have my surgery, I'm down about 10 pounds, but that's a big ask, seeing as how I've been this weight since the beginning of March. I was down to 219 last year, um, but then stress happened, and losing a job, and stuff like that, and it crawled its way back up. So, yeah, if you're watching this and you're trans, keep it up. You're an amazing person. Um, I'm proud of you. If you would like some, a boost and just some hope, um, listen to my podcast, uh, Transcending Humanity. You can find our YouTube channel here, which I'll link. Um, you can find all of our episodes on our website. You can find it on all podcast platforms. And we have different hosts every week um, and different topics. And it's It has proven to be a transformative, honestly, uh, 
experience for me to be part of that. Um, it's definitely helped my depression and um, it's helped a lot of people kind of get through all the hate that we face. Um, I've also found that as I've become more public, I have been found by some hate groups and I've received some death threats, which those are always fun. Um, and you can report those to the FBI and the FBI does take, does take it seriously. Uh, they have a tip line online that you can do it. Um, I reported one about four months ago because Instagram doesn't do anything about it. And the FBI called me back the next day and, um, they took it seriously. Uh, they talked to me seriously, and I don't know what's happened to it since, but it was nice to know that there are still people on our corner. So, just a little rambling video here. I just wanted to say hello, hello to everybody and just kind of give an update. Um, 59 days away from surgery. I, ugh, I can't wait. It's... It's what I've always wanted. I didn't know, always know that I wanted it, but it's, uh, the, the wait has been honestly brutal. I've been counting, quite literally counting down to days since like a hundred and, I think I started at like 122 days or so when I first got my surgery date and I'm getting there two months away. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about transitioning, um, anything that you think I can, uh, hand, uh, I can answer. Honestly, for the trans uh, trans feminine side, um, I don't know much about the trans masculine side, uh, but there is an episode on our podcast about that. So if you, we hope to have another one as well, uh, if you want to check that out. So yeah, oh, look, my camera's reversed and I couldn't tell that my, this top, again, the, the shoulders issue, I can't get this, uh, this dress to stay on, but Thank you so much for watching. Um, have a wonderful day and keep at it. You're strong. You're powerful. Don't listen to the hate. It's going to be there. Remember, they're the vocal minority. And honestly, anything that they say to us, you know, we haven't already said to our, we, we've already said to ourselves. So if you, if you can survive yourself, you can survive what others say. Um, just remember that.